Hello everyone and welcome to this session of Exposure Bracketing. I'm Rohan and I have with me Abhishek, my colleague from the Nikon India technical team. Hi Abhishek. Hi Rohan. So Abhishek, we are here today to talk about Exposure Bracketing. How can we help our viewers understand this in a better manner? Rohan, Exposure Bracketing, you know, it's a feature inside the DSLR and can be utilized in various ways. One way is it gives you multiple exposure of the same subject. Now, to all our viewers, you know, when you when you talk about exposure bracketing, you can even do it manually when you are shooting in manual mode. It's like you take one photograph overexposed, one photograph underexposed, and one balanced photograph in terms of exposure. So you vary the exposure exactly. basically. But as I said, one way is to do it manually in manual mode. Another way is there is an option given in most of our DSLRs which is called bracketing. There is a button there. You can actually choose that option and you can tune your camera in such a manner that suppose I choose three brackets of exposure and then I click or press the shutter release button three times. So it will give me three different exposures, one under, one over, and one balanced exposed photograph. And I'm sure you can set, uh, you know, the exposure level also in between like third stops, two exactly. stops, two up exactly. to, I think, two or three stops, variation between the exposures. Exactly. So you can, as, as you said, I can go like one third stops over, one third stop under, and one balanced shot. Unique thing about uh, our DSLRs are the bracketing starts from three brackets and even goes up to nine brackets. So what you can get is, in certain DSLR, you can get three different exposure of one subject and in high-end body, you can even get nine different exposure of the same subject. So Abhishek, how do we go ahead and uh, you know tell our users where and when can we use bracketing? What will be an ideal situation where you will opt for exposure bracketing? Bracketing is being utilized in various manners. You know, one, if I'm not sure as a photographer, I'm shooting in a brightly lit condition and I'm not sure what kind of exposure I'll be getting, okay, in terms of, uh, you know, lighting condition. Okay. So I just put my camera into bracketing mode and I'll take three different exposures or four different or nine different exposures, whatever my camera body supports. And then I can go back home and choose the best exposure I got. Another way is like, for example, uh, these days there has been a trend of something called HDR photography, high dynamic range. Yes, that's been catching up a lot. Exactly. And high dynamic range means human eyes have good dynamic range. That means I can see details in the shadow areas as well as in the highlight areas. Now, most of the cameras uh, can give you either details in the shadow areas or in the highlight areas. It is really very difficult to tune your camera in such a manner that it can give you a good dynamic range as compared to human eyes. So what people do is most of the professional photographers who are into HDR photography, they take three or four different exposures by using bracketing and then club all these images together to create a high dynamic range shot. This high dynamic range shot, once you achieve it, you're trying to say that it is uh, more closer to what human vision is. Exactly. What our eyes actually see. Exactly. Is there a demonstration that we can show our viewers how we can actually set our cameras and take these kind of shots? Of course. But before we move to a demonstration, one more thing I forgot to tell all our viewers, you know, the reason of using bracketing is when you don't have actually time to set your exposure right in manual mode. Okay, right? okay, I understand. Suppose a scene is right in front of you and you know it will pass by within a couple of seconds. So you just tune your camera in set bracketing. on auto exposure mode. And exactly, and take three different exposure of the scene. Coming back to demonstration, yes, of course, we'll be demonstrating how to set your camera for bracketing, exposure bracketing. So let's do that. Yes, let's go ahead. So Ron, here we are. Just to give a small demonstration on how auto bracketing works in DSLR. Right now what we are doing is we are using a Nikon D810 camera with 2470mm lens. This camera is hooked with the HDMI cable to that LCD television so that our viewers can get a very clear understanding of what we are doing inside the camera. Before we do the settings when it comes to auto bracketing, most of our FX bodies have got dedicated button called BKT for auto bracketing. And for DX users, one has to go inside the menu options. By pressing the I button, you can go inside the menu options and you can see this option BKT and then you can choose the various bracketing levels. So Abhishek, why don't we just demonstrate and show what kind of settings uh, go in when you have to, uh, you know, when you bracket your exposure. Right, Ron. For that, we are using this beautiful and colorful fruit basket so that the variations in the exposure are pretty much visible. So what I'll do is, I'll first press this BKT button, which is the bracketing button. Right now, you can see on the screen, it's stating off 1.0 and the meter. 
in plus and minus which we normally refer in manual mode to set our exposure right or we use an exposure compensation to uh, increase or decrease the exposure so right now this is showing this exposure meter so my bracket is off right now what i'll do is i'll rotate the command dial and once i do that you see i get 3f that means three frames and 1.0 means one stop three frames will be shot at exposure difference of one stop exactly so you can see three frames uh, will be taken by the camera of the same subject when three times i press the shutter release button so when i press the first time meter on the zero will be activated and i'll get a balanced exposed shot when i press the second time the under one stop under exposed shot will be taken and when i press the third time one stop over exposed uh, image will be taken so i'll have three different exposures and i can also actually uh, change the stops in terms of exposure so right now you see one stop by rotating the sub command dial i can actually set it to like two stops now you can see on the meter scale the exposure variation is not two stops i can also set it to two third stops i can set it to one third stops so accordingly based on the scene and how much dynamic range i want in the scene i can choose the various exposure levels right now let's keep it to like one stop so we have three frames at one stop difference so i have, i'll have one stop under exposed i'll have one stop over exposed and one balance shot so once i press the shutter release button this is shot which i got and when i see the meter scale right now you see the bar in the center that was on the zero is no more there that indicates that the balance exposure has already been taken by the camera exactly and the other two exposure are still there one at under exposed and one stop over exposed are still visible that means i am still in that bracketing mode okay. so if i take the second shot so this is the under exposed one you see one stop under exposed that bar is gone now right i'll take the third shot this is over exposed and you see the camera is reset back to 3 frames so it's a very helpful interface on the camera also which helps you you know you just can't forget or you just can't miss out exactly. so the camera tells you that you've already taken the balance right. and the under exposed shot and then finally the over exposed shot right bro and the good thing about you know today's dslr is i can just not uh, you know restrict myself in shooting to just 3 frames i can go like five frames so i'll have like approximately five frames at various exposure levels of one stop difference i can go even seven frames i can go even nine frames yes i think we're covering a huge tonal range uh, by doing that. right and also if i rotate the command dial other way around you see i can shoot like one stop balanced and one stop under so if i have a very brightly lit situation i know i don't have to over expose here so i can restrict myself to this a uh, bracketing mode wherein i get one stop under and one balanced shot if i have a very uh, dark situation already in front of me so i know i have to over expose so i can take one stop over and one balanced shot and in this also you can uh, manage the exposure variation as in one right. stop or one right. third stop and these are other parameters like three stops under exposed uh, so i'll have two stops going up to three frames one balanced one under and then further more under so like two, two stops, stops under. under yeah and then again we we'll have similarly overexposed i'll set it back to 3 frames so let's take a couple of more shots at various other exposure levels like 5 frames i say i'll set it to uh let me set it to two stops so good thing about today's dslr uh, is that i am right now on single frame so uh, single release mode that is i'll have to press the shutter release button Every all time five times so if i set five frames so what i'll do is i'll set it to continuous high and then i'll keep the shutter release button press and you see after 5 frames camera will stop and i'll have all five different exposures in front of me right and this is a highly over exposed shot so yeah, the highlights are blinking right so uh, you know this is the beauty of uh, having auto bracketing feature in your camera and for all the dx users Uh, as i mentioned you'll have to go into the menu option to activate your bracketing for that you need to press the i button and then you see the bracketing icon bkt written on it and then you choose it and then you choose various exposure levels like 1/3 stop 2/3 stop or 1 stop to uh, get that uh, dynamic range in your shot this is it about bracketing let's head back to the studio
So Abhishek, that was a very helpful demonstration for our viewers to understand and you know how to set up the camera for exposure bracketing and take different exposures of the same subject. Right, Ron. As we mentioned about HDR photography, it's not really possible within this limited time to actually show our viewers how to post-process HDR images, but it's really simple. Most of the photo editing software are capable of actually post-processing HDR images that is merging three or four different exposure together and create a good HDR image out of it. What we'll do is we'll leave our viewers with some stunning HDR images which uh, we created uh, during our course of uh, our outdoor workshops yeah. and uh, we hope uh, people will enjoy those images and we'll share some more interesting sessions with you later. Until next time, these are your Nikon buddies, Abhishek and Rohan signing off.